Is there truly a Disney hotel that's better than every Disney World hotel? I'm in Disneyland to find out. And also she's letting me go. Oh, yeah, hey. Where were you just now? Disneyland. I am here in Anaheim, California at the Disneyland Hotel for a full tour. We're gonna see the room, the pool, the food, uh, the fitness center. I know everybody, I'm, I really care about that. Um, lots of different things to see here at the Disneyland Hotel. Um, what's interesting is that oftentimes this hotel is stated to be a very, very nice experience, sometimes considered better than a lot of Disney World hotels. And I'm super curious. I've stayed at every single Disney World hotel except for one. So I think I'm pretty qualified to judge this. I'm just excited to be here. <laughs> Disneyland Hotel is located very, very close to the Disneyland parks. It is located across Disneyland Drive from Disneyland and it is immediately next to downtown Disney. It is one of only three Disneyland Resort hotels with 990 rooms and suites. It is a very short walk to the parks, uh, under 10 minutes, and gives you access to the Disneyland monorail. It's laid out in three different towers, one themed to adventure, one themed to fantasy, and one themed to frontier, with a relatively sleek modern design. Bell Services is located right outside of the front of the lobby, and this is a really great amenity where you can drop off your bags with them if you arrive before your room is ready, or you can leave your bags with them if you have to check out before you're ready to leave or if you're going to the park. We got here at 7 a.m. on our check-in day to drop off our bags, and we didn't get into the room until about 1 a.m., at which point we were able to call Bell services and they brought our bags up to us. It was very nice. Also, uh, like most Disney hotels, there's a little area in the lobby where kiddos can watch Mickey cartoons while mom and dad check in or check out anything that might take them on a long time. They can sit in these very ornate chairs and watch Disney cartoons. Now I'm distracted by concept art on the walls again. So magical bumper boats. Right when you enter into the Disneyland Hotel, you'll see this very large, very beautiful map of Disneyland, um, which I absolutely love, especially because it has special effects that do um, show up. You can see the Disneyland Hotel here with uh, the pool and the elevators going up and down the towers. It looks like Mickey. Oh, he just disappeared. The waterfall is going. Oh, there he is. He's back. That wasn't very long. Um, but there's all sorts of little magical effects in this map when you walk in, including Tinkerbell casting some magic. I could stare at this all day. There's a lot more hotel to see. Of course, there's no better place to start a hotel tour than at the room. Uh, we have already checked out, it's the next day, just because of how our schedule worked here in Disneyland, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and head up and take a look at the hallway, and then uh, we'll see our room tour that maybe was filmed at 2 a.m. last night. So we are in the Fantasy Tower, which has um, we saw this immediately upon getting out of the elevator last night. The Seven Dwarves riding storybook canal boats with Snow White. I'm obsessed with it. Um, but you can see that the hallways even have a lot of really like intricate details. Like the wood here has um, fantasy land nods. Like it's a small world and Snow White, Peter Pan, teacups all in the wood. And then the actual carpeting has the is a small world facade on it. But here was our room. And with that, we take you to the past. Checking out the room. First of all, it comes with a very tired Emma filming B-roll of Keurig pods. You enter the room to just your standard hotel door. It's got all the different like locks that Disney uses. This is the scanner that you use to scan your room key on your phone or the physical room key you can get from the front desk. Got your, what is this called? Door bar? Mm -hmm. It's a lock. Um, but you do have a padlock and you get your off to Neverland room occupied sign to hang on the door. Um, but heading in, we have a very beautiful room, jaw droppingly beautiful room. Um, this just amazing wooden headboard that has Sleeping Beauty Castle with like fireworks in it and this Mickey firework. The beds immediately, I noticed say, a dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep. There's a photo of Walt walking through Disneyland on the wall and a lot of little touches. This mirror feels very Disney to me. There's Mickey in the lamp, Mickey on this lamp, and even the carpet is fireworks carpet with like stars and little Mickeys as well. There are stars in the curtains and uh, you can see back where Emma was. There's sort of this like little crossover area that has the coffee pot, a mirror, what's that called? An ice bucket? Ice bucket. 
it's like 2 a.m. And then <laughs> there's a closet here um, and the bathroom in there. This doesn't have any drawers or anything, but there actually is a good amount of space under this little counter where you could keep your luggage. And I think that's probably where I would keep it if I was staying for a while, just to get it out of the walking space. All right, let's check out this little sort of extra space, which I really like. It makes the room feel a lot more spacious. I was honestly surprised, especially considering the price that this room goes for. It just, I mean, it really shocked me that the room was so spacious when I pay this much for a moderate in Disney World that is not nearly as nice or spacious or at least a lower level deluxe. Um, you've got your ice bucket here. It comes with four glasses and Disneyland Hotel coasters. I'm going to keep one of these coasters. Um, very cute and plenty of space there for your ice. These lamps look like magic potions in my opinion. I think they're so cute. And this mirror, it's like simple, but it has like whimsy to it. It looks like it could be a magic mirror, which is how I feel like a lot of this room is. It's classic, it's modern, but it still feels a little magical. Um, you've got a Keurig, which that's like the fanciest coffee pot you can get in a Disney hotel. Tons of different options for your Keurig, including hot cocoa mix, which is amazing. Um, and you've got the Disneyland condiment kit which comes with sugars sugar substitutes creamers and stirrers for your coffee and across the hall here we have a closet um that is pretty sizable it's a pretty good sized closet the most exciting thing in here in my opinion are these disneyland hotel robes they are emblazoned with disneyland hotel my brother's weird and he collects robes and i am gonna have to check tomorrow if they are selling the disneyland hotel robe because he will need it and i'll have to ship it home so hopefully they are because he'll be very excited about that there's um an iron in here extra pillow and blanket if you need it uh, instructions for if you want to do guest laundry and dry cleaning, an in-room safe that is programmable, and then a luggage rack. And again, plenty of space in here too, so this is another great place that you could put your luggage. Let's get into the room. We have a desk here. It's got um, a nice Mickey lamp that has like Mickey here. Um, and then I really like the lamps with the wallpaper color. I don't know if that's weird. It's like very cozy. Um, this desk has a really pretty sort of like wiggly, um, wooden texture to it. Drawer's empty, but there is a desk drawer here. I would love to do work at this desk. I'll just say it. Um, lots of outlets and room service menu and room dining. We don't see a lot of this in Disney World, uh, since the parks reopened from the 2020 closures, but there is room service dining. Um, here at the Disneyland Hotel with lots of options. Next up, you have a TV. This is a smart TV, so it's gonna have a little more options than your standard like cable. Um, a rather small dresser. There's actually not a ton of like drawer space here at the dresser. The room is so big that that doesn't really concern me. And also, these drawers are pretty sizable. There's only three of them, but that's pretty big. Next to that, we've got this cabinet, which does house the mini fridge which is one of the more sizable mini fridges you'll find in Disney hotels. You've got three shelves, well, four shelves, I guess, if you count the bottom, a place for cans and uh, some significant room in the door. Window wise, there's no like outdoor space. There's no veranda or balcony or anything like that, but there is this massive floor to ceiling window. You can't see out of it right now because it is nighttime, but we will look at that view in the morning. Um, you've got, your privacy curtain, ever important because we do have a pool view as do many of the rooms at the Disneyland Hotel. Um, and you don't always want whoever's down there looking up at you. And then of course, blackout curtains, ever important for your mid-park day nap uh, with these little stars in the curtains. Bed-wise, the room has two queen beds. Um, one has a dream of wish your heart makes on the pillow. The other has when you're fast asleep. Um, I am very excited to sleep in these. They look very comfortable. They have the added amenity of a reading light on the outsides of the beds. So if you've got someone who tends to stay up later, maybe they sleep on the outsides. On the inside, you have access to that side table. I do want to point out that the sheets have more of the details where there's Mickey's in the sheets. It's really hard to see. Mickey's and stars in the sheets. The side table is very sizable. There's plenty of room on here for all your gadgets that need to be in reach when you're in bed. Um, interestingly, unlike in Disney World, the Disneyland Hotel does have an alarm clock. The Disney World hotels do not have alarm clocks. Um, they do, however, uh, will soon have the Hey Disney Alexa, um, which some Disneyland hotels will have as well. 
Here's your remote for the TV. And you've got your Disneyland Hotel phone, which I thought was really surprising, is wireless. Um, which was just surprising to me. A uh, little book on telephone and internet information, which I love because it does have a picture of Walt on it, um, which is just a really nice touch. And a little pad for jotting down anything you might need to know while you're taking calls. This lamp has two switches on it. One controls this lamp. The other controls the fireworks. And when you turn the fireworks on... Storage-wise, with the beds, you do have underbed space, um, and it's divided, which I found interesting. So there's this underbed space, but there's underbed space on the other side, too. It's not like there's a block there, and it's pretty tall. Like, this is, like, a good foot high. You've got a shelf under the side table, and if you open this kind of whimsical drawer handle, you've got another sizable drawer here. Now, before we move on to the rest of the room, we've got to do it. Bed Science Disneyland Edition, um, and this time, special guest. I get to do Bed Science. <laughs> it's very exciting, Bed Science. This is a huge deal for me. Yeah. Disneyland Bed Science time. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. It's really good science. I think this bed is more comfy than Disneyland Hotel, Disney World Hotel beds. It's, it's the perfect mix of soft and firm, but this one is rising to meet, like, my back in a way. Supported. Yeah, that Disney World beds do not. They Disney World beds are that perfect mix of soft and firm, but the support on this one's different. Yeah. The pillows are firmer than Disney World pillows, which I'm fine with because they're still pretty plush. I like a really soft pillow. No, this is a good pillow yeah. if you like support. Yeah, and it's not too firm either. It's not like it's, like, hard. It's definitely, like, soft. But you see, there's no optimum level of head sinkage here where my head would sink into a Disney World pillow. Um, this has been very interesting bed science. My mm -hmm. bed science is usually, like, ah, this feels like the other Disney hotel beds, but this does That's not so feel amazing. like Disney hotel beds. No. God. I can't I'm... wait to go to sleep. I now headed to the bathroom. Lots of mirrors in here. Lots of mirrors. Because right here, we've got our full-length mirror. It was very important because then you can see me do this. In my Iron Man, what's left of my Iron Man outfit. Then in the actual bathroom, we have another mirror, which is also one that looks like it could be normal, but it's also kind of whimsical. And in this one, you can see me do this. This is my favorite part of the whole room, is that Mickey's gloved hands are holding the lights. They do have more Mickey's on the lampshade, and it's just absolutely adorable. Um, there is a makeup mirror in here. It is not separately lit, but it does do this. <laughs> to our left here, we have the commode room, which is a pretty good size. It's got a uh, photograph or painting of the Mad Tea Party lanterns. And then, you know, the commode, ever important for a bathroom. Across the way, we have our shower. Um, and it's a pretty standard shower. There are a few little touches like this hidden Mickey in the tile work. There's um, Mickey on the faucet here. But my absolute favorite thing, you have to look really close, but the font on the shower is Disney font for the on off and the directional arrows are Mickey's hands, which I love that. You've got your bath mat here, another bar of soap, um, and it's a standard size bathtub, so nothing too crazy. And I don't believe the, the shower curtain is just kind of a regular hotel shower curtain. We've got some hand towels, as well as, of course, regular towels. Plenty of extra towels in here. Tissue that's easy to access, hair dryer, and extra toilet paper. A very large sink and a good amount of vanity room. It's a single vanity, but there's plenty of room on here. Um, the little faucet uh, controls are Mickey heads, which is so adorable. And you get a number of H2O products, for now at least, including facial soap here, You've got body wash, body lotion, conditioner, a shower cap, shampoo, and something that I have never seen anything like this in Disney World is this cute, neat, and ready card, which feels very old school to me. It says, I'll make sure your room is nice and clean. If there's anything else I can do to make your visit more enjoyable, simply touch housekeeping on your phone, your hostess slash host, um, Disneyland Hotel, 
which is just, I just feels classy. You know what I mean? Overall, an incredibly nice room, an incredibly nice bathroom. I was shocked when I walked in here. It's beautiful. Um, and uh, also, Emma's asleep. In the corner, you got a lovely armchair, which is what Emma and I beelined for when we got in here um, because we're so tired. You got a trash can, and I really like this light. It definitely has, like, I mean, it fits the um, sort of modern aspects of the hotel. I think it ties together the magical aspects with the modern, which everything in this room does an amazing job of. The art in this room, besides the beautiful headboard, of course, is this print of Walt walking through Sleeping Beauty Castle in Disneyland, which I think is so charming. Um, and you do have a thermostat that you have access to as well if you would like to change the temperature. All of the story, uh, back to Morning Quincy, we'll tell you a little bit more about it. Morning Quincy, over to you. Thanks, Night Quincy. You really covered the room pretty well. I do not wish I was you. Morning Quincy is having a much better time. I slept amazing. These beds are so much comfier than Disney World beds. And Disney World beds are really comfy. I literally woke up and Googled the mattress. That's how much I love sleeping on this bed. It was so nice. Also, I tried the shower, also very nice. What's surprising to me is that this hotel is so old. It was built in 1955 or opened in 1955. And all the Disney World hotels are newer than that. And this feels newer than many a Disney hotel I've stayed in. It feels much newer than the Grand Floridian um, room that I stayed in. It feels newer than Boardwalk which was even later. Uh, Emma's getting us breakfast, but we have a really big day ahead of us, having our resort day, hanging out. Obviously, this is more like a vacation than a staycation. So happy to be doing it with you guys. Um, but we're gonna do breakfast in the room, because why not? And then we have some very exciting food to see today. We're gonna see the whole hotel, and it's gonna be so fun. I can't wait. Um, we do have to check out today. Unfortunately, I wanted to live here. Um, yeah, I'm not leaving. <laughs> oh, checkout is at 11. Late checkout's available upon request, but today Emma called and... Wasn't uh, working out for us. No dice for late checkout. Usually late checkout will just take you to 12 anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but we have about 30 minutes left in this room, and what better way to spend that 30 minutes than by wearing Disneyland hotel robes and eating breakfast in bed. That's all I want to do. <laughs> breakfast in bed has been had. It was delicious. Our bags have been dropped, redropped back off at Bell Services for the day. Um, and now we can check out uh, Fantasy Tower, which is where we are. It's also where the check-in is. So this is the main first tower that you'll enter when you arrive at Disneyland Hotel. No recognize we were out there earlier. So over there, you've got your front desk and guest services. Immediately across from the elevators, you can see a lot of photographs that have significance. All of them have little placards that share their significance. Like we've got the Sherman Bros here, um, Walt Disney with the opening ceremony of It's a Small World, Walt Disney and Mary Blair working on It's a Small World. I haven't looked through all of these yet and I absolutely need to. The check-in desks are on your left and past this beautiful Mary Blair uh, Small World uh, art print. And you've got, you know, your standard check-in desk guest services area. Now you can use direct room service, which is available within five days of arrival. To do this, you sign into your Disney account on the Disneyland app and go ahead and check in on there. Then you can view your hotel room number and unlock your room door in the app once your room is ready on check-in day. Check-in is at 3 p.m., although you can request early, but it's not guaranteed. If you're going to arrive early, be prepared to fill your day. And in that case, you can drop off your luggage with Bell Services. There are a couple of different merchandise locations here in Fantasy Tower at the Disneyland Hotel. We have right here, Fantasia Shop. This is gonna be the bigger of the two, and I really like it because it actually has um, the gators or crocodiles, probably gators, from Fantasia, sort of in the walls, and then lots of like those classic Disney details in the wood. This is gonna be kind of your like main stop for if you wanna buy Disney merchandise, Magic and Plus, Star Wars apparel, they've got pins, they've got plushes, including some that Emma wants very badly. They've got mugs. Uh, so if you, if you happen to have, oh no, like I didn't get a souvenir and I really wanted one when you were in the parks, you can cop in here and maybe check out. They're not gonna have as wide of a selection, so I always say that if you're in the Disney parks, you see something you really love, it's a good idea to go ahead and buy it. But they do have some Disneyland hotel specific merchandise, including some for Trader Sam's Enchanted Tiki Lounge, which, um, foreshadowing, but they also have some Disneyland hotel specific merch. Evan and I literally looked at this earlier and we were talking about how cute it is. Like the retro, like vibe, the 50s vibe with the Disneyland hotel logo is just really like satisfying. They've got hats like Walt War. Um, 
I might get this magnet for my fridge. The other Merchant X location is Small World Gifts and Sundries. This is a smaller one, but it's got a lot more of those necessities to it. So if you forgot something like a swimsuit or sunglasses, this is probably the stop you're gonna wanna make. They do have some like Disney merchandise, like bubble wands and things like that, but they also have the ever important necessities wall, shelf, whatever you would call this. Lots of medicine, deodorant, you know, things that if you forgot them, you are not out of luck. They've also got some drinks. Um, and the fridge that you can grab, just to grab and go. They have ice cream bars, which I really like. I don't see that all the time. And then lots of snacks. Um, keep in mind that these, <laughs> keep in mind that these will come at like a little bit of a premium from the grocery store. So it's better to just bring your own if you think you're gonna want something like Doritos. Go buy them from the grocery store and bring them instead of buying them here. But it's nice that they are here in case you have that craving. The other really cool thing about this shop is that they do have um, busy movies and scenes playing on the screen and they can do custom ear embroidery here which is really awesome uh, if you happen to miss that while you're in the park or you want it ahead of going to the park before you have park tickets. You can pick out um, ears. They can embroider a lot of different pairs of ears um, and different customizable gifts and then you can get them customized on the embroidery machine. Get your own customizable ear hat. The main feature that you might recognize from the Disneyland Hotel is the monorail pool and slides. There's actually a pretty sizable pool area here featuring the monorail pool, the D ticket pool, and the E ticket pool. And then we're on a bridge right now, but the monorail pool is over, of course, by the monorail slides. Then you have the e-ticket and the d-ticket pools. Uh, the Both of these have decorative signs that resemble the theme park tickets of yesteryear. So like e-ticket, uh, ticket books and things like that, which is super fun. But also uh, there's a couple other things you can do at the pool, including Mickey and Minnie's uh, spa whirlpools. So they do have hot tubs, which is something that we could probably get behind on a cool day today, but I would dread getting out of it. And then, um, for an additional fee, you can even lounge the day away in a private poolside cabana, which you can see across the way there. That's a great option if you are spending like a full resort day, um, but keep in mind that those are first come, first serve, so you'll want to come book them early if that's something you want to do. It's a beautiful monorail slide. You can see that uh, it is styled after the Disneyland monorails, the original Mark I of the Disneyland monorails, and you do slide through them, which sounds really fun. Uh, but it is 50 degrees. Another really cool thing about the pools is that the restaurant that is right next to the pools, Tangaroa Terrace, you can actually get poolside service if you're a hotel guest. So you can come to Tangaroa Terrace without staying at Disneyland Hotel, but if you are a hotel guest and you're, and you're enjoying the pools, which are for hotel guests only, you can get poolside service. And they have Dole Whip. And they have Dole Whip. Can you imagine? And they have Dole Whip with rum. Can you imagine? Speaking of Tangaroa Terrace, this is Tangaroa Terrace Tropical Bar and Grill. This is one of the main dining locations here at Disneyland Hotel. It is inspired by the Enchanted Tiki Room and Disney calls it a tranquil oasis. Uh, but there's a beautiful wraparound terrace and lots of like palm trees and things like that. It feels very tropical. They serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, as well as uh, some offerings with specialty coffees and adult beverages. So we are actually gonna have lunch, I think, because we're really hungry. I particularly love the lamps that are like in tea theme up above the fire pit. Um, we actually were able to get in to Trader Sam's and a tiki bar. Walk in immediately. Literally we walked up, we put our name on the list and then she was like, give me a moment, like don't go too far. And we like took a step away from the host stand. She was like, she was like, no. And then they were like, yeah, your table's ready. It was like, <laughs> we've never experienced this in our lives. No. This so amazing. we are in Trader Sam's and Shane tiki bar for lunch now. I think that uh, we'll do a little montage here of our meal. But I think we'll probably do a full separate video on this one. This is the OG Trader Sands. Yeah, Trader Sands is of course an interactive bar here in Disneyland Hotel. It is tiki themed, it's themed from Trader Sam from the Jungle Cruise ride. Very funny, the drinks, everything's very funny and the, the bartenders are very funny. So I think we're gonna have a pretty good time. We'll drop in some tidbits for you, but keep an eye out on the channel for our full Trader Sands review. Unfortunately, Emma did succumb to the Tiki Gata Oa, so I did leave her in Trader Sam's. It's unfortunate, but uh, we've got more resort tour to see, so I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't know what I would do, quest after her. Oh, next, we're headed to check out the Rose Court, which is, why am I so zoomed in? Rose Court is a, it's a garden, sort of like 
basically a lawn here at Disneyland Hotel, which is one of the many options for a venue with uh, Disney fairy tale weddings. Uh, the photos of ceremonies at Rose Garden are very beautiful. Um, I wrote a post on Allers.net that I recommend you read. We'll put it in the description. I enjoyed writing it. That's a list of all the places you can get married uh, with Disney, and that's Disneyland, Disney World, Disney Cruise, all of it, um, which is pretty darn cool. But the Rose Court is right over here. Um, it's sort of this lawn, and it's used as an event space for things like weddings and things like that. But here is the main uh, sort of part of that magical wedding venue and they do ceremonies out in front of the gazebo which is very pretty of course nothing's going on today which is good for us because that means we have to walk over here but onward now at the time of filming you probably also spot a pretty big construction site here this is going to be the new disney vacation club tower that's coming here to disneyland hotel it actually looked like it's making really good progress i think they have glass panes in it's kind of hard to see behind the scrim but this is going to be a new Disney Vacation Club location. That is Disney's timeshare uh, program. So folks can buy into that and then have uh, rooms at different Disney places through different uh, through a point system. If you ever do want to stay in a DVC room, but you are not DVC, I highly recommend you check out David's DVC Rental, where you can rent unused DVC points from DVC members. But yeah, this is going to be a pretty cool new tower, a new addition. It'll make this a four-tower hotel. Uh, here's that concept art for it. It looks pretty cool. For now though, we're headed into Frontier Tower, one of the existing towers here, to check out a little of the, kind of the vibes in here, really. You can see that the Frontier Tower is decorated with like, you know, a sitting area, its own like mini lobby, uh, but has a lot more like brown tones, like oranges and things like that. The best part about this lobby though is definitely this model of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad in Disneyland with Frontierland at a scale of a quarter inch to one foot. Frontier Tower is also home temporarily to the fitness center. Um, now the fitness center used to be located kind of out on the lawn with guest laundry next to the pool, uh, but that lawn has now been overtaken by what will be the DVC tower. So instead the fitness center is currently in the Mark Twain meeting room, which you can find right here. No one's in the fitness center, which means I actually get to talk about it, but you've got a, a variety of cardio machines. This is a pretty sparse fitness center, but uh, it's not a super large hotel. There are two benches with a wide variety of free weights. They've also got added amenities of some towels. Uh, there's some talk about fitness classes as well, which are hosted by Tanaya Stone Spa. Um, and you can learn more about those if you're during your stay by like scanning the QR code. You can find it in the Disneyland app. Find it by looking at Tanaya Stone Spa on the Disneyland website. Got waters and some kind bars that are complimentary. So not nothing too, too exciting, but uh, definitely works. Look, there's... A, there's nothing like running on a treadmill and watching Disney princesses. All right, we've crossed over um, across kind of the pool area. We're now by this building, which is one of, it's a part of Disneyland Hotel, it's the convention center, but it is not um, like a tower. There aren't rooms in here. It's where events are hosted and things like that. So uh, this is a really great asset for people who are posting conventions, I guess. And in back this direction, there's a little Autopia exhibit that features Emma sitting in the Autopia car. Ride to the future with Honda at Disneyland. Autopia through the decades. It's pretty quiet in here right now. I really love the sparkly stairs. I mean, I, if I was gonna go to a business event, this is what I would want it to be hosted. Um, and even if you are not here for a convention, maybe walk into the convention center because there's a lot of like Disney exhibits and memorabilia on the walls. Um, this is really catching my eye over here. Oh wow, it's like, just a ton of Disney merchandise from the past, you know, 70-ish years. That's wild. Some of it's scary. The other restaurant here is Goofy's Kitchen. This is actually a character meal that features Chef Goofy and friends. It's buffet style, um, and it definitely, to me, has Chef Mickey's vibes for my Disney Worlders. You can see that it's got, like, a lot of different characters in their chef's outfits meet here. Um, it is close to the day, but there's this very cute backdrop which totally, it's very Toontown. And I love that, very nostalgic, I think, where you can meet Goofy. If you're staying at the Disneyland Hotel and you do have a resort morning and you got little kiddos who would benefit from character meal, this is an expensive one because it is a character meal and those tend to be pricey. 
but it's also very fun, very popular as well. Make sure to make dining reservations in advance for this one. The other benefit of Goofy's Kitchen is that you don't have to be staying at the Disneyland Hotel to eat there. If you're staying in the area or just have a day at Disneyland and you want to head out early or start your day late um, and come do that character breakfast, you certainly can. And then on the outside of this building, you can see the coffee house, which Emma did take you to earlier, so. It was delicious and we probably should go It again. was delicious. And now we're here at our final tower, Adventure Tower. Obviously themed to Adventureland. Heading in here, sure enough, you've got concept art and some models for Adventureland, um, including these uh, Jungle Cruise monkey models. I guess those are apes. Um, elephants, giraffe. Furniture here, pretty similar to Frontierland, but the carpet has the nice like tiki situation. Also, there are more meeting rooms here at Adventure Tower as well. Uh, Disneyland Hotel is a convention hotel, as you may have caught on. Conventions can be hosted here, and that of course can add to crowds. So it's kind of hard to tell when a convention is coming, but it's just something to be aware of when booking Disneyland Hotel. It, the hotel seems relatively empty today. It's really nice today. The vibes are really immaculate. Yeah, they're very chill, except it is cold outside. <laughs> Alright, the last thing for us to do as we explore Disneyland Hotel is to see just how close it is to the parks and to downtown Disney. That's a major like amenity of the Disneyland hotels. <laughs> Now there are some off-property hotels that are pretty much right across the street from Disneyland. It can be just as short of a walk, but they don't have the same amount of perks as a Disneyland hotel does. Let's talk about some of those Disneyland perks. So staying in a Disneyland hotel, one of the three, including the Disneyland hotel, uh, includes early entry to 30 minutes before the park opens to either theme park as long as you have a park admission and a reservation. It also includes special activities and events a lot of the time, so you can keep an eye out for signage for that or just anything that might be announced in the theme parks. You have, as you can see, very close proximity to downtown Disney and the theme parks. Literally, we are walking under this hat, which is the edge of uh, Disneyland Hotel, and that is security to get into downtown Disney. Um, you also get next day package delivery to your resort, access to the monorail, and preferred access to dining reservations in some cases. And just like that, about 50 steps from walking out of Disneyland Hotel, we are in Downtown Disney. Downtown Disney is Disneyland's shopping and dining district, similar but a lot smaller than Disney Springs and Disney World. Uh, it does have some of the same options, um, but as you can see, it's, it's, it's not super large, and it actually doesn't take that long to walk all the way through and get to the Esplanade, which is sort of the courtyard between Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. Now, as we walk through downtown Disney, just to kind of get a lay of the land and how long that walk is to Disneyland and Disney California Adventure, let's talk a little bit about is the Disneyland Hotel worth it? So first, we've got the pros. One, you've got that proximity. But there's proximity to a lot of other hotels. Still, being able to walk right in and through security is one of the closest places that you can stay to the parks and to downtown Disney. The next pro is the rooms. These rooms are really nice. Both Em and I were immediately wowed by the room and continued to love being in it until the next morning, which I can't say of every hotel room. And I can't even say of every Disney hotel room. And of course, the Disneyland hotel does give you that Disney magic as well. There's concept art for Disneyland all over the walls. It's historic. Like it was opened when Walt was still alive and around Disneyland. So it does have a lot more Disney magic than, you know, staying at like an off-property hotel would. On the con side, you do have that price. Now, though this isn't as expensive as some Disney World hotels with that like base rate being around $400 a night, $400 to $800 is still pretty expensive for a hotel room when you could be staying for $200 a night just off property, just a short walk away. In fact, for us this trip, we stayed off property for the first three nights that we were here and switched the Disneyland hotel just to save a little money. Another con is that there is construction going on right now, which can certainly make for a little bit of noise. It wasn't super noisy today, despite the fact that they were working on the tower, but it isn't, it's a little bit unsightly and will certainly change up the composition of the hotel in the coming years. So it might be something that you want to wait to stay there until that's completed. And finally, crowds can be a concern. Disneyland Hotel is not only popular, but also can host conventions. So if you are wanting to avoid a crowded hotel, Disneyland Hotel is probably not going to be the best way to do that. Unlike in Walt Disney World, the price tag over one of the other Disneyland hotels, Paradise Pier Hotel, which will soon be rethemed to Pixar Pier Hotel, isn't getting you that much closer to the park. You're still so close to the other hotels on property that you can access those restaurants easily too. So it's really all about wanting that Disneyland hotel vibe. I think the absolute biggest draw for Disneyland hotel is gonna be those rooms. Also, Disneyland is very different with the Good Neighbor and non-Disney hotels in the way that they are just as far of a walk as the official Disneyland hotels, but quality can be pretty hit or miss on those non-Disney hotels, so make sure to do your research. We actually were relatively unhappy with the hotel that we stayed at, 
just a little. And just because we didn't do our research, our expectations were not quite right. Um, we were about a 20 minute walk away instead of what I thought was gonna be right around, right across the street. So it's just something that when you're looking into a hotel, you might wanna check that out. The other two Disneyland hotels that you can look into, the official Disneyland hotels, are Grand Californian, which actually is a very large hotel. You can see it right here, up above World of Disney. World of Disney is actually at the base of Grand Californian. And Grand Californian has a private separate entrance into Disney California Adventure in Grizzly Peak, which is very cool. And then there is Paradise Pier, which is also very close to the theme parks and is soon getting rethemed to Pixar Pier, just like Paradise Pier did in Disney California Adventure. Now, both of us absolutely would stay at the Disneyland Hotel again. Oh God, We've discussed yeah. it multiple times today. It is so magical. The rooms are so nice and comfortable. And it just like really, I mean, it feels like a Disneyland hotel when you're in Disneyland. It feels incredibly nice and upscale, too. And I think when you look at the price compared to Walt Disney World rooms, it's hard to ignore. Um, it's going to be significantly more, like Quincy said, than the ones across the street that maybe aren't Disney official. But when you look at compared to Disney World, it's pretty nice and a little exciting, honestly. I think for me, it really is just the magic that's a draw. I, I mean, I could absolutely see myself being happy doing what we did on this trip, staying in a cheaper hotel and then switching to it for one night of magic. But I think like the idea of having like a four night vacation where I stayed in the Disneyland hotel, like that just feels exciting to me. All right, just like that, a couple minutes later, I think it's under a 10 minute walk for most people. We weren't even walking that fast. We were here at the Esplanade between Disney California Adventure and Disneyland. We are both gutted that it is our last day in Disneyland yeah. and that we're not walking into the parks right now to have more fun. But we had a really amazing time in the parks and we had a really amazing time at Disneyland Hotel last night. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see more Disneyland content, let us know. Let us know what you'd like to see in the comments. Um, we can definitely try to make that happen. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe and now go watch our best day ever in Disneyland. See you there.